interested in this detail here, we're first of all going to make all of these polygons into quads. And to do that, we need to ensure that we have the same amount of edges on this top side as we do on this bottom side. Now, we can always go in a little bit later and clear it up to kind of minimize the amount of edges we're using in total. But for now, all I'm going to do is go into perspective mode, grab this side polygon and this side polygon, and hit delete to get rid of them. Now this means that we can go back into a right view and we can use the slice tool to start adding in some extra edges. And because we've deleted these side polygons, when I activate the slice and slice down like that, we're not going to get any extra vertices floating in the middle of these giant polygons on the side and that's just going to make things a lot easier. So I'm going to add in four edges on the bottom using the slice tool to match these four up here and they're going to come along. We need five here, so five on the slice tool and they don't need to be exactly lining up, we'll tweak them in a little bit. Now here I'm going to add in, let's see, I think we will add in all of them, so I'm going to add in seven. So I'm going to do the ends first, add what is that? one in the middle, and then I need four more, so two in each gap, like that. And then I think that's all the slices we need. So with that done, I'm going to drop the tool with space and go back to perspective. I'm going to double click this open edge loop, and then deselect with control the end two edges like that. Now with just these selected we can then come up to the edge menu and use the bridge tool to connect all of these together. It's kind of a quick way of doing that. Now obviously we can do the same thing on the other side. I haven't activated symmetry for this one because it is such a quick process really. Double click to select the edge loop, deselect both of the end edges bridge and right click to activate and that's all nicely coded up for us and we can check that over here in the lists polygons by vertex more than four and you can see we've got zero polygons there so everything's looking exactly as we want now we have this indent to add in but we've already created this indent over here in the nail file and it's in exactly the same place so instead of creating it again from scratch we're going to go in and copy this one However, this is a subdivision surface model, whilst our pokey thing layer, which is hilarious, is not. This is a straight up polygonal model. So we're going to have to alter the subdivision surface layer slightly in order to get them to fit together. So what I'm going to do is activate the nail file layer and select it and then turn off our pokey thing layer. Now we're going to come in. I'm going to select two of the polygons that make up this loop surrounding our indent and I'm going to hit L to loop them and then going to hold down shift on my keyboard and click the close square bracket key and that's the one just to the left of the enter or return key on your keyboard and when you do that it basically closes the loop and it will select all of the polygons inside the smallest ring you have selected. So with all of these guys selected I'm going to hit control C go into our pokey thing layer and hit control V to paste them together. Now I'm going to activate that layer and turn off our nail file layer and then go back into perspective mode to see what's going on. Now because we've moved our pokey thing into position as well as our nail file, the nail file indent is actually behind uh, this object that we're currently working on. So we need to move that into position. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click it, go to a top view and we're going to move it to the right until it matches the side profile, like that. Then back to perspective, we can have a look at how we've got to join them both together. Now we can see quite clearly that it's overlapping these two polygons here. So for the moment, I'm going to double. I'm going to click both of them, sorry, and hit delete to get rid of them. I'm also going to delete this one, and I think I'll delete this one as well. And this just gives us enough space to work around this indent. Now remember the SDS subdivide uh, tool I mentioned earlier, that is what we're going to use on this surface here. Now remember, because this is taken directly from our nail file, this is currently a subdivision surface model. And you can tell that by coming to the statistics panel in the lists tab, coming down to polygons and drawing down by type. You'll see that we have 232 faces, and if you click the plus it will select all of those guys. So you can deselect them with the minus. And you can see that we have 58 subdivs. And if you click the plus, we're getting this section here selected. So we need to hit tab. And then you can see we have zero subdivs and we have that many more faces in our scene. So 
With this selected, I'm now going to come up to the Mesh Edit and click on Subdivide, SDS Subdivide. I'm just going to click that once and see if it gives us enough detail for our model. So I'm going to deselect that and come in. And I think if we just go to Shaded Visibility Options Show Vertices, just so you can kind of see the shape of the model a little better, I think that's personally going to be enough detail. I don't think we're going to have to subdivide that again. Um, so the next stage is essentially to connect this up. But before we do, I'm going to come in. I'm just going to see if we can lower the poly count on this model at all. I think I'll double click this second edge loop in and hit backspace to get rid of it. I'm also going to get rid of both of these two in here. So I'm going to highlight both of those edges, hold down shift and double click. And then if I hit backspace, it will just get rid of them. And that's just taken a couple of polygons out of our model. Not many, but enough that if we do that in a couple of places, we'll have reduced it by perhaps a couple hundred by the end. And that could mean all the difference. Now I want to add another ring of polygons around the indent. So I'm going to double click that outer edge, hit Z key for edge extend, right click to activate. And then instead of moving it with the edge extend gimbal, I'm going to hit R for scale. And I'm just going to scale this up on both axes and maybe perhaps move it a little into position like that. So we just have this ring running around uh, our indent. And this is the one that we're going to connect up to the outer uh, kind of main body that we have in place. Now I'm going to start off by looking for places where we can easily add in some polygons. I'm going to have a quick look down here. Now this polygon is perhaps a little close to this edge for my liking, so I think I'm going to delete that guy for the minute. And this leaves us with these edges here that we can try and connect up. So I'm going to select these three here, these three here, come up to the edge menu, the bridge tool, and right click to join them together. Now obviously we have more up here that we could connect to these three perhaps. So if I connect these two together and then grab three down here and three up there and bridge those as well. We've actually done quite a bit which is good. So I'm going to come back to this end and take a look to see what we've got. And I think this one could go with this one and this one could go to this one here. And perhaps actually we could take this guy to this top one. So I'm going to go bridge and bridge like that. We've got those connected now. And remember with the bridge tool it's just important to have the same number of edges in each of the loops that you've selected. So we now have these two giant middle sections with which to do. We have a single row of polygons here, a single row of polygons here, whereas in the middle we actually have a huge amount. So to begin with I'm going to come in and double click this edge loop and this edge loop, I'm just going to hit P to fill those together with a giant end gone. Now with that done, we can start thinking about how we're going to connect these up. So I'm going to tackle this top one first. I'm going to start by making a triangular quad on that corner. I'm going to see if we can do the same on the other side. And uh, yeah, I think we could. Let's do that. Basically, I just don't want this to be too skew if too kind of, you know, leaning over to the side, but I think that's okay. As long as we've got this row of uh, polys surrounding our indent and this row surrounding our main body, then anything we fill it up with usually won't make any smoothing errors. So we can kind of get away with having these more kind of leany edges here. Now I'm going to take a look at the bottom and see, we've got this edge here that we can make into a triangular quad. And then at the bottom, it looks like we're just going to have to add in some more edges. So what I'm going to do is select one of these top edges, right click, I'm um, sorry, Alt C for the loop slice tool, and then put it roughly about there, I think, and then hit space to drop the tool. Now we're going to go in and concentrate on this bottom section first. So I'm going to draw an edge from there to there, which makes this into a quad. I'll then draw an edge from there up to here, so skip one of these ones at the top, and this turns this into a triangular quad. And then if I draw an edge from here all the way over to here, we end up with two quads there. And again, this is quite leany here. This is quite you know, angled. But as long as we've got those edges there, we're not getting any smoothing errors, as you can see. So with that done, we can just come up to the top, add in one extra edge there, and we are done. In fact, if I come down to the Statistics tab, and I roll up by type quickly, 
and look at by vertex more than four you can see I've got nothing in there that has more than four polygons so our pokey thing whatever it may be for is now completed and now the nail file is done we know the three techniques we'll be using to create the rest of the tools on the model in fact we may be using the same technique we just used so first of all just to recap we created the needle threader which used entirely polygonal techniques so no subdivision surfaces we initially went in with the pen tool and created the initial shape then extruded it and added in some bevels and then added in whatever extra detail we needed we then went on to create the nail file again using the pen tool but this time we used subdivision surfaces with the tab key and we had to create support edges or anchor edges to ensure that the edges we created with the pen tool stayed exactly where we want them and this allowed us to create this extra nice curve at the bottom here with a minimal amount of hassle but remember the poly count on that one is a key thing finally we created the pokey thing I really should find out what that is but pokey thing and essentially we used both techniques for this the main body was created using this polygonal method and then we created the inset or at least stole the inset from our nail file which was originally a subdivision surface mesh which we then converted into a polygonal mesh so we could connect the both together now as I said we're going to be mainly using this last one however it could alter in a couple of places we might create half of a tool using a polygonal method create the other half using a subdivision surface method and then connect the two halves together in a different way but from now on things are going to be speeding up a little bit as we create the rest of the tools but don't be worried I'm going to still hit all of the main points and ensure that you know any fun things or any things that you should know are definitely covered now before we can use my preferred method there are of course a couple of exceptions to the rule the first of which is this corkscrew now I've created a corkscrew mesh item in our bottom tools group and I've also activated the set3 underscore corkscrew ref items which gives us this right ref and this bottom one as well so I'm going to head back to a right view quickly now when I initially modeled this I used a couple of different methods however I was watching a video over on the Luxology forums the other day and happened to um, find a great technique that Andy Brown used uh, that reminded me of a tool that I'd never used before and is actually perfect for this kind of thing so Andy, Gr Andy Brown is uh, full of great tips so go check out his stuff over on, on Luxology forums but uh, basically what we're going to do is use a tool over here in the duplicate menu called the radial sweep tool and this is like a kind of circular extrude and it will add in extra detail for you now it's best explained by doing really so I'm going to come up into the basic tab and click on the cylinder tool I'm going to zoom in and we're going to create a circle that matches the width of this tube that makes up our corkscrew I'm going to make it right on this corner here so I'm going to click in the middle and drag out a cylinder or a circle even and we want it to be the same width on both axes we want it to be just ever so slightly bigger than our tube because we're going to be using subdivision surfaces and when we do the vertices are going to be pulled in ever so slightly towards each other so I think 820 looks pretty good and we want to have the sides as small as we can uh, to begin with because the subdivision surface method is going to add in that detail for us so 8 is pretty good I think so when you're happy space to drop the tool with our circle in place we can now come up to the duplicate tab and start taking a look at the radial sweep tool so I'm going to click it and you see down here it's actually called the helix generator and we've got several options down here like a start angle and end angle and we've got a count as well so what do all of these guys do well it's best to explain by doing so what I'm going to do is just right click in the viewport pretty much anywhere really so I'm going to right click about there and you see what we end up with is this circle which you can kind of make out all of these different circles in it and they've been kind of joined together and moved along and they're in a circle that is surrounding the point where we clicked so if I undo that and click somewhere else a little bit further out we get a much wider circle if I was to undo and click closer in we get a smaller circle so that's kind of the first thing so what we really want is a circle that is the same width as this corkscrew so I'm going to right click somewhere in the middle so out there looks pretty good I think maybe I'm doing a little bit I'm just watching this top edge until it gets to about there and I think that looks pretty good so I'm happy with that now I'm not going to drop the tool because clearly this is not a corkscrew so I'm going instead going to go to perspective mode and take a look at what we actually have now as you can see we have a flat disc that is rotating around the X axis whereas our corkscrew is going down the Z axis so instead 
I'm going to come over here and click on Z key. Now, this still clearly is not a corkscrew, but I suppose at least it's rotating the right way. Now, how far is it rotating? It is doing one entire loop. And we know that because the start angle is zero and the end angle is 360 degrees. If I change the end angle from 360 to say 180, we get half of a rotation. So it takes our initial shape and extrudes it around a curve half of one rotation, so 180 degrees. So I'm going to pop that back to 360 a minute. And you can see that we have these crosses at either end, and these actually alter the start and the end angle if you just grab and kind of drag those around. So that's pretty useful as well. And I'm just going to undo that for a second. The other option we have down here is offset, and this is the one we're really interested in. If I start moving that, you'll see that we start getting something that looks a little bit more like a corkscrew. However, at the moment it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to kind of drag that back the other way and see what we've got. Now, if we take a look at our options, we are getting one 360 degree rotation around the axis that we defined by right clicking and it is moving a distance of 6.7 millimeters like that. So every 360 degrees, it's moving minus 6.7 millimeters. Now, we don't actually have the numbers for this, so we're going to have to use the reference images to kind of eye, eye it up. So I'm going to go to the right view. Hey, that's actually pretty close. That's pretty good. I'm kind of happy. Right. What we need to do is basically make this, make our offset the entire length that we need of this corkscrew. So I'm going to keep dragging on this until this end point right in line with this endpoint here so a little bit further like that remember you can hold down control to get this a little more accurate if you'd like so I think about there looks pretty good so I'd say I mean that's close enough to minus 22.5 now obviously we're not rotating around enough we're doing one 360 degree rotation still as you can see from that view but now we're moving so far that we haven't got enough twists so I'm going to go back into a right view and we're going to simply up the end angle to add extra twists into it. Now what we could do is we could say we have one rotation, we have another rotation, another rotation. So we have three full 360 degree rotations. Now 3 times 360 is 1080. So I'm going to put that in the end angle and hit enter. And then we get somewhere close and from there we can kind of drag this into position. So I'm just going to keep dragging this until our end point here matches up with this top point. So something like that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put 1170 like that. And you can see we're actually matching it pretty closely. So I'm now going to go and take a look in perspective mode. Now you can clearly see that at the moment our polygons are all flipped. But if we were to hit F to flip them around, we would lose the interactivity of our helix generator. So it's important to get it in the right shape before we flip our polygons. However, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Now we need to scale it um, minus 1 across the x-axis, but again, scaling it would lose us the helix generator. So what I'm going to do is instead come in here and instead of 1170, I'm going to change that to minus 1170 which makes it rotate the correct direction. Go back to right, make sure everything's still matching up, and it looks pretty good, so I'm going to hit space to drop the tool. Finally, I can come in, and now we've rotated it in the other direction, our polygons have flipped for us, so all that's left to do is get this end polygon and delete it. Now if I was to hit tab, we'd go into subdivision surface mode, and we actually end up with a rather nice looking corkscrew. Now if we go into a right view, and just check, you'll see that we're a little bit off of our reference. So if I double click this, you'll see that because we're in subdivision surface mode, we've kind of squeezed everything down a tiny bit. So what I'm going to do is activate the scale tool. I'm just going to scale this up on the Y, move it to the right slightly, and then scale it on the Z a little bit, just a tiny touch, move it into position, make it down a little bit. It's basically just tweaking it until you can get it as close as possible. Remember to go into the bottom view as well, and we can move this guy across into position and make sure that it's the right width on the x-axis as well. 
and when it's pretty close. Now I don't know if the uh, one that I used for the ref was perfect, but uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'm kind of happy with that. So I'm going to hit space to drop the tool. And now we can work on kind of tapering in this end. Now as you can see from our reference image, the end of this corkscrew tapers to a nice point. So I'm just going to bring that guy back. And what we're going to do is just use the reference image to kind of guide us to the width of these loops. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm just going to move it up slightly. Maybe do the same just for that one. And then this guy can move up. I'm just going to position it so it's essentially in the middle of, uh, of the reference like that. And then with it still selected, I'm going to hit R for scale. I'm just going to scale that down to about the right size. I'll then go to perspective mode. I'm going to grab this polygon at the end and go back to the bottom view. And we're going to scale this down quite a way like that. And then move it up into position. So we've matched our ref pretty closely now. Perhaps this is a little bit high, so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. I'm going to go to a right view and just take a look at what we've got. So essentially we want to bring this up a little bit. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit as well, and maybe just slightly to the right. And then we can go to perspective and clean up this end polygon. And to do that, I'm going to deselect it and come out of subdivision surface mode. I'm now going to grab this end polygon. I'm going to hit B for bevel, right click to activate. And instead of doing anything, I'm just going to come up to join averaged and hit OK. And that gives us this single vertice in the end, and it turns all of these guys into tries. If we now go back to subdivision surface mode, we'll see that we end up with quite a nice point down there. So I'm going to go back to take a quick look at our references. Just make sure that our point is looking OK. It's perhaps overshooting a little tiny bit now, so I'm just going to kind of move this into position. Go back to our right view, so just kind of switch between right and back, just to kind of line those up. And when you're happy, we can move on to the rest of the body. Now this part is actually fairly simple. I'm going to make sure that we're not in subdivision surface mode for the rest of the mesh, so I'm going to hit tab to come out of that. I'm then going to go to the basic tab and just draw out our cube for this guy. I'll go to the bottom view and move it into position and use the red X to create its width like that. With that done, I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and go back to perspective mode. Now, essentially what we're going to do is use subdivision surfaces for this entire model. So we're going to have to come in and add some anchor edges to stop this guy from turning into this when we go into subdivision surface mode. And it's quite simple. We're just going to exit that, select one of these edges here, Alt C for the loop slice tool, and with our count set to 2 and our mode set to symmetry, I'm going to right click and add in two edges like that. I'm then going to do the same thing across this way, horizontally across the box. So we're just creating all of these squares on the corners basically. So now we have squares here, but we don't have squares on this way. So I'm going to do it one last time in this direction. Make sure we have these squares on the corner. And when we do, if we go to subdivision mode, we get a nice square here. We've got our box exactly as we want it. Now I'm just going to come in and grab this edge ring here because what we've got to do, if I go into a bottom view, is basically extend this out so it's right in front of our box. So with this edge loop selected, I'm going to hit the Z key for extend. I'm going to right click to activate and move it to about the middle of this curve. I'm going to rotate it whilst holding down the control key which will snap to 15 degree increments and we want it snapped minus 45 degrees. With that done I'm going to hit Z again for the edge extend tool, right click to activate and bring it out to the end here. And then I'm going to rotate it with control hold down another 45 degrees. So we've gone 90 degrees in total so one quarter of a turn. So this is lining us up perfectly with this box now. And then we can go in and tweak these edge loops into position with the move tool. So something like that looks pretty good. And they're going to go into a right view. And we can move these up into position. So I grab both of these. It's just a case of coming in and tweaking them basically. Like that. Now if you take a quick look at the bottom 
of this corkscrew section, you can see that we have these two edges here that are trying to connect to this one on the box. So a good thing to do would be to select this edge on the box section, Alt-C for the loop slice tool, and with our count set to 1, and we can actually change the mode as well to 3, I'm going to right click and add in an extra edge in the middle like that. Now I'm going to come up to the side, and if we now go to a right view, and zoom out slightly, you'll see that our cylinder kind of connects just above halfway onto the box. So what I'm going to do is use the slice tool, which is Alt C, sorry Shift C, to add in an extra cut all the way across like that. So about this level here. Now I'm going to hit space to drop the tool, go back to perspective mode, and we can come in and start figuring out how we're going to join these together. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is delete these eight polygons. With them all selected, I'm just going to hit delete to get rid of them. I'll then come to the bottom. I'm going to select both of these edges and both of these edges, come up to the edge menu and bridge them together. And that has started our connection for us. From there, it's just a case of going in and trying to fill in the gaps. So as we go up the sides, I'm going to fill in these two with these two and go to bridge, and right click. You can see things are looking a bit odd. If I missed something there, I'm just going to undo that quickly. And you can see I have in fact missed an edge in there. So I'm going to deselect those guys. Instead, I'm going to select those two and those two. Bridge and right click. And that problem is now gone. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to select these two edges and these two edges. Bridge and right click. And now all of this is connected down here. We can then go out of subdivision surface mode and take a look at what we've got. Now at present things are looking okay. We've got a flipped polygon there, which is flipped in regular mode. But if we go to sub Ds, it looks normal. So I tend to leave those guys alone as we're only going to really see this in subdivision surface mode. So I'm going to go out of that for a second and take a look at what we're going to be doing. So we have these two edges here, which could connect potentially with these guys. So I'm going to bridge and right click. And it really is just a case of experimenting with these things. Now if I was to select those edges and hit P, we end up with a quad there. Do the same on the other side, we end up with another quad. Now if I was to go to subdivision surface mode, we have actually connected the two together. So with that done, we're going to quickly bring back our pokey thing, needle threader and nail file and just take a look and make sure everything's okay and fitting next to each other correctly. It seems to be okay, so I'm going to turn all of those guys off and create a new item called screwdriver. Now I'm going to drag that up into the bottom tools group. We're going to come up to our refs and turn off our corkscrew group and turn on our set3 underscore screwdriver refs. And again, we get a right view as well as a bottom view. So from a bottom view, we're going to come up to the basic tab and click on the cylinder tool. And we're going to draw a cylinder that is the same width as our screwdriver. So we're going to just draw this out and move it into position roughly just to make sure we've got it the right size. And we want both of these radiuses to be the same, so I think 1.9 is good. Now I've currently got 16 sides selected and I've chosen 16 because there are four of these little indents in our screwdriver. So essentially what we want is a, a cylinder with a number of sides divisible by four that gives us just about enough detail for our model and 16 is pretty good for that. So this has 16 sides and when you're happy, space to drop the tool. I'm going to select it and we're going to rotate it on the X axis. And I'm going to hold down control while I do this and that will snap to 15 degree increments which means that we can get exactly to minus 90 over here. With that done, I'm going to move it down to the base, into position. I'm then going to hit the X key for the extrude tool, right click, and we're going to drag it all the way out to this point. I'll then select the polygon that is at this end and delete it. Select these edges then, hit the edge extend tool, which is Z on your keyboard, and pull these out and then we're just going to scale them in like that to give us that point. All that's left for us to do is add in an extra edge across here, which we could do with the edge slice tool. So straight across at the base of these little indents like that. 
Now with that done, I'm going to go to perspective mode and take a look at what we've got. And the first thing we need to do is essentially draw in where our indents are going to be. And I'm going to start at the very top here. What we'll be doing is drawing an indent, or drawing two edges, in fact, from this point out to either side on this next edge loop. So what we end up with are these four tri polygons, like that. With that done, we're going to take these two, we're going to go round in a clockwise direction, we're going to skip two edges, and then do the same thing. So we're going to draw two extra edges like that. Then we've got these two, we're going to skip two and do the same thing here. So we're going to draw an edge there and an edge there as well. And then with these two, we're going to skip two and do the same thing one final time, like that. Now if we were to come in and grab the two edges running around uh, our screwdriver, which are in the middle of our indents, so just these two, like that, so we end up with eight edges selected, and now if you hit the backspace key, we get our indents created, so that's a really quick way of doing that. Now just before we add in some bevels to this, we're going to go in and sort out our end polygon here. Now what we actually need to do is merge this guy down to this middle vert, and then this guy down to the middle one as well. So what I'm going to do is select them all, I'm just going to scale with negative scale turned off, I'm just going to slam that down. And this just saves us some time. Oops, sorry, I did it then by mistake. I'm going to slam that down, space to drop the tool. I'm going to go around and collect these three. Scale tool, slam them down. I'm going to do the same thing here. Scale tool, slam them down. Scale tool, and slam them down like that. And with that done, we can come over here to the vertex menu and click on merge. With our range set to automatic, it will automatically kind of glue those verts that are right on top of each other together. So if we hit OK, it will say 16 vertices merged. So that is pretty much what we want. I'm now going to go in and double click this end loop and hit P to temporarily fill it with a polygon. Now what we want to do is add bevels to these end indents. And to do that, I'm going to first lasso select this loop, and then going to lasso select this loop, and this one as well. We then need to go in and select all of the edges that make up these indents. So we're going to select all the ones around the outside and the two, or sorry, one in the middle as well. So same here, all the ones around the outside, one in the middle, all the ones around the outside, one in the middle, and the same down here, all the guys around the outside and the one in the middle. Now I appreciate it gets a little bit hard to see once we get into here but essentially you should end up with about 52 edges selected. And with those selected you can hit B for bevel and we can draw us out a nice edge bevel like that. And I'm just going to quickly go around where the edge bevel tool is still active and take a look at what we've got. And you can see we've got an interesting pattern at the end here with a couple of n-gons in there that we're going to have to sort out but that's okay. We've got some tries here but that's okay. And we've got a five-sided polygon there at the end of each indent that we'll have to sort out, but again, that's really no trouble. So I'm going to hit space to drop the tool. I'm going to go to a side view quickly. We're going to add in an extra slice down there like that, just to sort out any smoothing issues and stop them going into the rest of the screwdriver. I'll then go to perspective. I'm going to draw an extra edge across like that. So that's giving us this quad and this try. So I'm going to do that on all of the other three. I'll then come up to the front here and do exactly the same thing. So we're going to end up with a quad and a tri by adding in an edge across there like that. So I'll do that on these guys as well. And with that done, we end up with a loop surrounding each one of our indents. So we've got these extra polygons, and that's going to stop some smoothing errors. So all that's left to do at this end is come and take a look at this very, very end polygon here. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is select it. I'm going to hold down Shift and click the up arrow to select these guys as well, and I'm just going to hit Delete to get rid of them all. With that done, I'm going to select this edge loop and hit the P key to create a new polygon in there. I can then select it 
add a slight bevel which makes all of these into quads and shift this out slightly to give us our beveled edge there. I can then hit shift and click to reactivate the tool and drag this in a little bit further. And perhaps I might even go to vertex and click join averaged which will bring all of these into a single point in the middle. And that is all that we need to do for this end of the screwdriver. So I'm going to come up and save our scene quickly. So I'm going to save our seven screwdriver end done and hit save and then we can come and take a look at where it matches up to the main body. Going into a side view you can see that our screwdriver tube is a little high but it means that we can take a good look at our reference image. Now you can see that at this end of the tube we have this kind of sloped line that connects to another sloped line on this block section. So what I'm going to do is come up to the basic tab and click on the box tool. And we're just going to draw out our basic shape here and I'm just going to draw this out to this bottom corner here. And I'm going to go to a bottom view. We're going to use the arrows to move this into position and then the red cross to give it some width. With that done, I'm going to hit space to drop the tool, go back to a side view and move this down into position. Now with these guys selected, what I'm going to do is activate the slice tool with shift C and I'm going to draw a slice that follows this line here but a little bit further along. So something like that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and delete all of these polygons here. Now on the box, I'm going to move this one just slightly to the left to make our slope there. In fact, I might just move these ever so slightly that way. And then we can move these guys back along to fill in that gap. So what we're doing is essentially joining this section here to this section here. So we're going to clearly have to add in some extra edges on this box section. And to do so, we need to know how many edges we need to add in. Now, I seem to remember we made this with 16 edges, whereas clearly this, if I delete this polygon here, only has four. So why don't we start off by beveling this and see how many polygons we have then. So I'm going to select this entire object. I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and come up and convert it to edges. And then going to hit B for edge bevel, right click, and drag us out a nice bevel. So something like that looks pretty good. If I then double click this edge loop, you'll see we have eight edges. So we need eight more. Now we have four sides here, so we need two extra edges on each side. So I'm going to come to the other end of our box. I'm going to click one edge in this loop. I'm going to click one edge in this loop. And I'm going to Alt C for the loop slice tool. I'm then going to change our count to two and right click. And we add in extra edges on both of those loops at once. So you can actually select as many edges as you like to add edges to with the loop slice tool. So it's a real time saver that one. Now I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and take a look to see how many edges we have now. We actually have 16 so it's exactly what we want. Technically in that case if we have 16 edges in this loop and we have 16 edges in this loop it's perfect situation to use the bridge tool so we may as well give it a go. So I'm going to come over here to the edge menu, click on the bridge tool and right click and see what we get. Now things don't look amazing but they look pretty good actually. I'm quite happy with that. So I think what we need to do is bevel both of these selected edges. So with them both selected as they are, I'm going to hit B for bevel, right click and drag us out a bevel like that. And then we go out a little bit, we can take a look and see what it looks like and that actually looks pretty good I think. And what we could do is add an extra loop just in there which will help some of our uh, smoothing issues. I'm going to change our count down to one, and just drag that along and that's just going to help us with some of our smoothing. And I'll do the same thing on this tube here. So select an edge, Alt C for the loop slice tool, just drag that along into position. And with that done, our screwdriver is now complete. So I'm just going to quickly double check our reference images. The right one looks great and the bottom one looks really good as well. So I'm very happy with that. So our screwdriver is now complete, which means that all the bottom tools 
on our pen knife have now been created. And it's at this point that we can really speed things up a little bit as to create the rest of the tools it's really the same technique for every single one of them. You create a slide profile with the pen tool, then you either use subdivision surfaces to shape it or polygonal tools to shape it, and then extrude it to create the width, add in some bevels, any extra detail you need, and you're done. And it's fairly straightforward to be honest. I mean we've done all of the tricky stuff that we need to do. The majority of the techniques we've used here will be used again on the rest of the tools. So I'll still cover all of the steps required but we're going to really speed things up in this last video. Now we have a few minutes left in this video so I've activated the set for reference images and created a bottle opener and can opener mesh item and then grouped them together into the top tools with control G. Now I've come into a left view and I'm going to use the pen tool to just sketch out the basic shape of these tools. So I'm just going to add in some points here. These are all very obviously hard corners and then we enter subdivision surface territory here, some curves. It would be uh, very tricky to get correct if we didn't use subdivision surfaces. But basically there's no science to the number of points you put down. The fewer you can put down the better but you need to kind of ensure that you block out the shape uh, in kind of a, a concise way really. Now if I was to go into subdivision service mode now with tab you'll see we end up with this very awkward looking weird shading error here and that's because it's trying to subdivide uh, this entire n-gon at once and it's having trouble so we can help this out by temporarily converting these into quads. Now don't worry about splitting these up all nicely uh, these quads aren't actually going to be used in the final bit uh, at all so you can just split these up however you like essentially um, you don't have to follow what I'm doing uh, you can do if you'd like um, but just you can make extra cuts if needs be but I'm just trying to basically temporarily cut these up into quads we're not actually going to be using these side faces in the end at all but with all of these quadded up I'm going to hit tab and you can see that we now have the basic shape in place we don't have our hard corners yet we have a uh, successfully subdividing model. Now I'm going to move over into the can opener and do the same thing. So with the pen tool and it's going to come up and add in as few points as we can get away with basically and uh, one on each of the hard corners. I notice I'm not overdoing these curves really I'm just adding in kind of a bare minimum amount of points. So one up there, one there, maybe two, and then one at the top and then we'll add one there and one there. Again we'll go in and convert this into quads and remember doesn't need to be precise, doesn't need to be exact, uh, it's not really doing anything other than just helping it kind of convert it into subdivision surfaces so don't worry about getting this precise whatsoever. Um, do one there and do one there and if you have to cut any extra edges just go ahead and do it. Um, essentially Think that's about right. So if I tab that now you'll see we also have that. We have to go in and add in our hard edges now but the main shape of it is now completed. Finally in this video I'm going to come back to the bottle opener and we're just going to start dealing with some of these harder corners down here. So I'm going to go out of subdivision surface mode and first of all making sure that these are lining up nicely which they are now. We can go in and start creating those support edges with the edge slice tool. So I'm just basically creating edges quite close to the edge which will enable us to add this square on the corner. And at the moment I'm not going to worry about these n-gons that we're creating by doing this. So now you'll see that we've got these two squares on these corners and if I go to subdivision surfaces we now have some nice hard edges down there. So I'm going to basically repeat this for all of the other parts of the model. On this section where we've got an edge kind of in the middle of a row of polygons, instead of adding in the square we come in and add a support edge to either side and with that in place we now get a hard edge down there exactly as we want. So we want one more up here so again we want a support edge on either side so I'm going to come down to there. Now I'm going to bring this one down to the middle of these edges so we just get a bit of an even spacing between those two and I'll do the same on this side as well. So about evenly spaced to about, probably about there-ish would be good. And what this does is it A gives us a hard corner here and it 
also um, gives us these edges here which are equally spaced apart that we can start tweaking up now into position so we've got basically this section pretty much good to go right now so now all we have to do is tweak these bits over here so I'm going to carry on just for a quick second I'm going to bring this guy up a little bit like that and I'll just add a support edge in here down to the middle of this edge support edge in on the other side down to the middle of this one and then we can go into tab mode to see our hard edge there and we can start bringing these up into position then we've got one here where we need to add a hard edge so I'm just going to take that across and I'm going to take this one down the reason I'm doing that is because we've already got the edges that we kind of want here um, potentially we could add another one in there but we'll see what happens in a minute we might have enough so I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and go to subdivision surface mode now I see that we can move these guys up a little bit so I'm just going to grab those verts and move them up into position and with that done if I just tweak this guy a little bit we've got a large portion of this side profile completed we just have this bottom section to do 